I remember he stopped sleeping. That was kind of the, that was the first sign that, that something was off. The first time he had a panic attack, I, I thought he was having a heart attack. You know, I didn't know what was happening. He started shaking. He couldn't think, he couldn't sleep, he couldn't drive. Matt was really ill. By October, he was full-blown manic psychosis. We knew it was stress-related, and you know, we now know that stress is one of the main triggers for bipolar disorder. We spent a year kind of going in and out of treatment programs. Nothing was really working. We hospitalized him again in December. He was there for two weeks, he got released. He stopped taking his meds. It took three and a half years to find the right doctor. And then we got like our big break. Somebody who knew my husband said, I went on a ketogenic diet, I kicked my addiction, I got over my obesity, and I cured my bipolar disorder. And I was like, by May, when it started to work for Matt, I said, oh my God, this, it, we can't, we have to share this. We have to start funding science right now. The usual paradigm in medicine has been that you, know, you start with a drug, and if that doesn't work, you add another drug or many more drugs. I think it'd be better for us as a community to look at the brain more holistically and say, this is an organ that we need to understand better to prevent disease or treat disease. One of the biggest misconceptions in medicine is that brain is separate from the body, it does not. Everything is physiological. Metabolic health is looking at any kind of metabolic abnormality that gives us a sign that there's some dysfunction in the body. If you don't have an ideal or optimal metabolic health, the chances of you having other disease or more complications or treatment resistant forms of disease is higher. Metabolic psychiatry is looking at improving metabolic dysfunction to improve mental health. Bipolar disorder and other major psychiatric illnesses are likely actually a systemic illness and that the brain is one part of that systemic illness. The regulation of how energy flows through the organism, through neurons and other cells, and through the brain is fundamental to how the brain works and how we work, how we perceive the world. In schizophrenia, in bipolar disease, there is a problem with the way the brain utilizes glucose and other aspects of the metabolic machinery. Then circumventing that and providing another source of energy, we might be able to normalize the abnormal cell biology, therefore the symptoms. Ketogenic diet is a diet low in carbohydrates, moderate in protein, and high in fat. When your body is burning fat as a fuel source, you will have ketone bodies. That ends up having tremendous effects on your metabolism and brain function. It's a metabolic therapy that we know works through a number of pathways that can balance the neurotransmitter systems in the brain, balance the energy levels in the brain, reduce systemic inflammation, which reduces neuroinflammation. We know inflammation in the brain can trigger psychiatric disorders. We've known for over 100 years that ketogenic diets improve, stabilize, protect, energize the brain. The science is already here. This is an evidence-based treatment for epilepsy. We have two Cochrane reviews, which are the gold standard meta-analyses in the medical field. Could a dietary intervention that's metabolism-based, could it actually affect the processes in the brain that produce the disease to begin with? In which case, if it turns it around, then are you curing the disease or modifying the disease such that you don't really need to have other therapies for symptom relief? I think I was ready. I was handling a lot of the other elements of the wellness program that need to be taken care of. Exercise, getting sleep, et cetera, not smoking. I'd quit smoking. When my mom, Jan, came to me and said, look, Matt, there's this diet that could be helpful for your illness, the keto diet, I was fully on board. In order to convince the field that this is something you should seriously consider you know, prescribing for your patient, we have to be able to tell them 
how it works. I think it's really important to be systematic and meticulous about answering very fundamental questions because those will provide the foundation upon which our treatment modalities will be understood. We started our philanthropy several years ago. We're funding individual components and building the system to connect it all. I hope we're a catalyst for a lot of other funders. We need a lot of different voices and different patients and different communities coming together. Clinicians who are treating patients with ketogenic diet, basic scientists. We need to embrace the entrepreneurial world. We need to give patients a voice and put that forward and, and let them be part of the advocacy. Enabling them and empowering them to take control of their health. We need to reconsider how we think of mental illness as metabolic brain dysfunctions that are reversible and treatable. The more we learn about core drivers and core solutions, and the more that gets out into the public, we're naturally gonna have a dissolving of stigma. In 2017, the World Health Organization estimated there were one billion people on the planet suffering from a mental disorder. A lot of people are suffering. We wanna just get the ball rolling to let people know there might be a better way. We have an obligation and we have the resources to make a huge change. I mean, to literally impact hundreds of millions of people's lives. We need to build a movement.